continue telling you about himself and introducing his colleagues. Mr. Chapman. Thank you. I must thank uh, Dr. Joseph and Mrs. Clark for giving me the opportunity of speaking to you today. In fact, to me, this is not surprising. It is just a dream that has come true. For many years in my arduous research, I have been thinking that someday I will be standing before doctors to lecture on herbal medicine. I have with me here my son, Lester, who has been with me from childhood. He's rightly my understudy. He has left these shows for the past 30 years. He's been in North America, Africa, the United States of America, and Europe. He has a wide knowledge of herbal medicines, especially in Africa. And so he has returned to assist because as you can see, I am a client. I don't know if you want to guess my age. How do you think I am? <laughs> Enter my 81st year. And that's a good time to spend in one field, 70 years. I have also with me my assistant, Mr. Issa Pursue. He has been with me for the past five years and is very studious. I have taught him the art of uh, compounding, naming, and getting together the hopes for medicines. Also, I have uh, Mr. Selwyn George. He is an educator, a distinguished teacher, an auditor, and now he's in charge of my, as my business representative. My particular reason for being here today this lecture is to tell about the role of the herbalist in modern medicine. There are many parts of the world where the herbalists work in collaboration with the doctors. Of course, it's not so here in Trinidad. But I think the time will come when we will better understand what herbal medicines are and from whom they have been derived. I am a firm believer in the Bible and so I want to read two texts of scriptures to support my effort in herbal medicines. One is found in the book of Ezekiel, the 
47 chapter and verse 12, which Mr. George will now read to you. Well, I will read the last part of this. Uh, this uh, Can you better text. come to the mic? Yeah. Oh, I will read the last part of these texts uh, because these are parts relevant to this issue. Um, it says, this is called 47 12. It says of the tree, and the fruit that, and the fruit thereof shall be for me, and the leaf thereof for medicine. <coughs> Revelation 22, 2, last part says, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I want you to take special note of the word nations. If there was a time in the world when the nations of earth needs medicine, it is now. I was always saying years ago that diseases are going to come upon us that doctors will not be able to find the cure. And it has begun to happen already. So, I think from those two verses, you can see the importance of herbal medicine is mentioned in the Bible. I know some of you are hearing that for the very first time. Uh, I have my own philosophies. One of them is, Whatsoever is possible to think of is possible to achieve. I should have seen more of you noting that. That's deep. That's not passive. Whatsoever is possible to think of is possible to achieve. This is how I started out. When I read the biography of George Washington Carver, I said I couldn't leave this out. His watchword was, start where you are and use what you have. Time will not permit my telling you how I started and what I started with. At least you will laugh. But, it is true, and it's deep. Uh, what the other is, reasoning from cause to effect. I do all my practice, reasoning from cause to effect. Where there is no cause, there is no effect. And so the whole of life is based on cause and effect. I reason, therefore, in order to cure any disease, you must at first find the cause. Only then you can arrive at cure. I want to tell you something about one of the diseases that is now rattling the world. And it's a puzzle to doctors, commonly known as psoriasis. Do you know what is psoriasis? It's a skin disorder, skin blemish. Thousands and thousands of people are suffering from that today. And there seem to be no way out. So, I went to work at this. 
and perfected a lotion that eradicates all that is seen on the skin. It is true that whatever appears on the skin must first have its root internally. So buying a shampoo or anything for the skin is not the cure. Remember that in any skin blemish, it's not what you put here that matters. It's what goes in and pushes out. So that the blood is important. Pure blood. And remember that we are made up of what we eat. Therefore, it is very important to eat the right things. And uh, I think I would be very remiss if I didn't warn you students about the type of food I see most children eat. And you come from school. Chicken and chips have nothing in it. Absolutely nothing. And with an impoverished bloodstream, you are exposed to anything, especially skin disease. So, psoriasis is one of the ailments that we take pleasure in curing. I say pleasure because people come there who have tried everything else in the world. Think of it, people coming from the United States of America, Colombia, other parts of the world with this terrible skin disease that medical science as described as a no cure. There is no such thing as a disease that cannot be cured. I think Dr. Joseph, you should like that. Yes, I like that. <laughs> there is no disease in the world that happened to cure. So, reasoning from cause to effect is important. I have brought with me some exhibits. I think I should show you one of them now. That's a vine. You get that in our forest here. Uh, from this, I've extracted the pyrethrin substance so that you have an insecticide, which is pyrethrin. It's the safest insecticide in the world. I took this to the San Grande Hospital in the days when we had the German roach. You can remember? Yeah, it was was pestered, they call him German roach. So I've made an insecticide from that. And while I was being tested by a government chemist, I took a sample up to the San Grande Hospital to Dr. Strisifer, and having used it, he gave me a recommendation saying that is the best he have ever used. And I took that up to Cara, and Dr. Brandy gave me another insect. Um, recommendation and so I went abroad and the government hospital bought it, both in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have a plant here that any one of you with a mind for research can start with. I think that's quite open minded, you don't think? I'm not hiding it, you see. It's your chance. The same thing. Observation and discovery and talk about the only achievement. Talk about the observation and discovery and the only achievement.
Let me tell you something about my early achievements. I saw a man died in the San Grande Hospital, did the casualty ward. As he reached there, he died. He was suffering from asthma. And when I saw that, I thought how important it is that I get down to business and make something for us. You see, what brought me into this field is my hatred for sickness. I don't like to see people sick from childhood. When I see a person suffer, I just feel I could just hold that sickness and wring it out. So you know, I have a passion for healing. That's part of me. When I saw that, I got down to business. And I knelt down and asked Jesus to help me to make a medicine that can cure us. Well, I've succeeded. Thank God. And because of that, hundreds of children of this country can go to school today without being molested with us. We have gone so far to say to parents on television and the papers, if your child is suffering from asthma, just bring us one bottle of honey, and that takes care of your child. Up to 15 years we do that. Children up to 15 years suffering from anything can come to the Herbal Research Institute at San Diego Grande and get treatment. One bottle of honey, one. What do you say about that? I'm talking about one of the things that medical science has no cure. And you can bring a child, suffering from asthma, bring me one bottle of honey, and you Let me throw a challenge. I want to prove myself true or false. Is there anyone here suffering from asthma today? In 15 minutes' time, you come back here free. Nobody? Very good. Nobody here suffering from asthma. Well, I'm glad. You sure you don't? Another thing, I am proving myself true. Anyone suffering from arthritis or any type of pains in 15 minutes can be free. If you come to my place, you came up there better and you came in. Arthritis, a pain that cripples people. Nobody here have that one to try it? We have a right just here again. Nobody here have pains. <laughs> well, this is what we stand for. It's not making the money. It's seeing human beings better. So we, our slogan is children honey, adults money. You know, government practice of herbal medicine and make the point that herbal is another bush doctor and then talk about these things. Yes, you mean? Yeah, talk about, make, talk about the practice of herbal medicine. Make a point, a herbal is another bush doctor, talk about that and then talk about what you do. Uh, you know, uh, herbal medicines is not always rightly called, not rightly named. Some people talk about bush medicine. 
it carries a stigma of witchcraft. You know, so when people come there to the institute and ask the bush doctor, he said, well, not here. You go and learn some manners and come back here. I'm a research herbalist, not a bush doctor. For if it is bush, then go and get some bush anywhere and boil it. It takes something else besides the bush that you talk about. It takes blending. It takes comparability and incomparability. Compatibility and incompatibility. So that's not just ordinary. You got to know your business. And so, especially as man, I take the light in treating people. Thank God he has given me that skill. So that when a person comes there with asthma, we sing. I could say just a few minutes, you'll be all right. They go behind the curtain. And when you come from there, you're free. And not only ordinary people who come there. Would you believe that doctors send patients from different hospitals to Santo Gandhi, bearing my name? I don't know the doctors. Uh, speaking to Dr. Seaford of the University of the West Indies, a man came one day and told me that Dr. Seaford sent him. I said, you are not speaking the truth. He says, yes. And the way he spoke about you, I thought, well, you were friends. I said, I saw the man once on television. And then Dr. Seaford and Dr. Roach came one day to visit me. And I said, Dr. Seaford, someone came here some time ago and told me that you sent them. I said, not someone. I've been sending people to you over the years. But I never knew. All this I'm trying to impress upon your minds the importance of herbal medicine. From the fact that it was ordained by God, then he knows, more than all of us, he knows what is good. And that's what he gave us. The leaves of the tree shall be for medicine. of our own in the Institute. Uh, my first sign is, my first sign you will see is the power of Jesus subdues every evil. And I'm pressing that because many people don't want to hear the name Jesus. And whatever you do, wherever you go, we are told in the Bible, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So whatever the achievements, it's because of Jesus. Another sign. Women dressed half naked or with pants cannot enter. Absurd. Eh? Say it's absurd. You want the words you want? That's your business. But not there. I told you I am a firm believer in the Bible. And in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22, verse 5. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment.
apart from being irreligious. It's unreasonable. For instance, if you see a man coming across there with a woman's dress on, what would you say? He's mad. <laughs> you will be quite correct. According to our code of ethics, it's incorrect. If that is incorrect, how then can a woman wear a pants, just come by a pants and put it on? And a man, no one doesn't care. Is that logical? How can it be illogical for the man to put on a woman's dress, but logical for the woman to put on a man's dress? You say, well, you never hear a man like that. Exactly what it is. We have to come to grips with principles. Then we have another sign. A. What's the word? Age what? Victims are not allowed entrance. Age victims are not allowed entrance. You see what I mean? Maybe passion, passion. Why? Is the sickness is anything else? It really is. But if I allow people to come in there with it, what do you think will happen to my place? I have treated people with it. They got success. But I can't, I can't vandalize that. I can't let people know that. Because we will flock there. Two young men came, not at the same time, and I wanted a first hand information about AIDS. If I have to treat it at all, I must treat it right. I must know its source, you see. So I asked the first young man, just 22, how you came by that? I said, now if you don't tell me the truth, you are not going to get better. If you tell me the truth, I'll be able to give you the medicine. So he said by homosex. The second one came and he said the same thing. So if I talk about it from that angle, I'm on solid ground. But uh, the Bible mentioned something. I join in that. In Romans, the first chapter. Paul said, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. So he gave them up to a lascivious mind to walk those things that were not convenient, man with man and women with women. That's rampant in the world today. He gave them up to a reprobate mind. Sometimes you find it. Innocent one, pain with the guilty. If it is a scourge from God, I don't think there is a cure. If it is not, well, it's different. Talk about the prescription, talk about what you do when patients come. Maybe surprise. And we discuss reason and cause and effect. And then we prepare the medicine. And there is no doubt, I must tell you also that doctors come, you know. Two gentlemen came in one morning, and as they sat, before me I said, you are a doctor. And he said, no. I said, you are a doctor. He said, no. And the other man said, I am a doctor. 
So I left him off and I spoke to the younger man. So why are you here? So I brought my little boy. He's suffering from asthma. So I had a chance to talk to him. So I said, medical science say that there's no cure for asthma. You know that. He said, well, yes, we know that. See, I'm going to prove to you this morning that asthma could be cured. I'm going to take your child behind the curtain. And when he comes out, I want you to ask him how he feels. So I did that. When the child came out and I was putting his medicine to educate, I said, ask your child how he feels. So he asked the boy, how do you feel? And the boy began laughing and said, I am free, I feel all right, I feel good. His face was lighted up. Now that's a doctor. Another doctor came. I do not know if he's still at the San Grandi Hospital, but he told me that. Of course, he's from India. He said his wife suffered from asthma for 36 years. And she had the... Uh, of course, that's all that uh, they can prepare, something. I said, well, you can throw it away from this morning. He said, I'm going to take your wife behind you. And when she comes out, I want you to ask her how she feels. So I did that. And when she came out, I said, ask your wife now how she feels. And she smiled. <laughs> she said, I feel good. I feel free. I can breathe. And so his face was like a doctor. A doctor. If nobody else in the world, you would want to see where is your wife. Am I correct? It is not that he has not tried, but you cannot give out what you don't have in this you. So these are some of the conditions. I wanted to talk about this. The what? Herbal prescriptions. Prescription. We have a question of them. Some of them might not be pleasing, but we want to get down to the root of it. And because, as I have said before, we are made up of what we eat, then, um, for instance,